Few of us are lucky enough to be able to splash a thousand pounds or dollars on our first mountain bike. But those who are will skip the entry level kit and basic frames into a world of upgraded performance and trickle down tech from more expensive bikes. And you'll be joining the mountain bike party at the same point as folk who've already spent some time on cheaper, more basic performing kit. That's a nice luxury to have and you won't need to upgrade again for quite some time as you want to take your riding to the next level. At this price point, full sus bikes are becoming viable options rather than just hardtail mountain bikes with front suspension only. Now on to our top 5 sub £1,000 mountain bikes. As always, if you want to see more content like this, don't forget to like, subscribe and click the little bell icon so that every time we upload a new video, you get a notification. If you've got £1,000 to spend on a quick trail hardtail, then the Boardman MHT 8.9 absolutely has to be on your shortlist because it's a bike that is capable of outclassing nearly everything else in its category. As a rework of Boardman's Fast Trail 29er, the MHT is more an evolution than a revolution. It's blisteringly fast, with a lot of that pace coming directly from the Boardman's lack of overall weight. Pop it on the scales and you'll see it actually comes in at around 2kg lighter than many other bikes at that price point. The 2020 model's understated frame has an attractively stealthy grey and tan paint job with matching tan wall tyres and is paired with a very capable RockShox Reba RL4. At the same time, a sorted SRAM SX Eagle one by drivetrain with a 50 tooth crawler cog should see you at the steepest of inclines. The MHT can even lend itself to commuting duties thanks to its rack mounts, low overall weight and hard wearing tyres. Although it's a speed focused XC style bike and is a different proposition from the full suspension bikes we'll talk about in a moment, if you like going quickly and don't suffer with a bad back then it could be the smarter choice. Okay. So the Calibre Bosna is technically a tad over budget after you've bought the discount card from Go Outdoors. But it's such an incredible bike for the money, you'd be crazy for not trying to stretch that little further beyond the grand budget to get your hands on it. The 2020 version of the Bosna has 130mm of travel, two bottle cage bosses, external cable routing and a port for an internally hosed dropper post on the seat tube. The geometry is on the money for a trail bike too. The size large has a 460mm reach, a 66 degree head angle, 1 degree slacker than the outgoing bike and a 74.5 degree seat tube angle. The 130mm of rear wheel travel is damped by a RockShox Monarch R air sprung rear shock and that's paired with a 130mm travel RockShox Recon RL4. Elsewhere you get SRAM's 12 speed SX Eagle drivetrain and SRAM level T brakes. There are also WTB branded rims and tyres. The kit on this bike is amazingly sorted for the cash and the places where Calibre has saved money will give you a clear path to upgrade this into an even better machine. Out on the trail, the Bosna left us wondering whether, for the money, any other bike can even compete. Granted, it's not perfect but it's about as close as you'll find for the cash. Carbon framed Voodoo Bizango looks like a much more expensive rig thanks to its internally routed cables, modern geometry and sleek uninterrupted lines. It's one by specific which means there isn't a front neck and this helps improve its overall aesthetic appeal too. The great looking frame is specced with top choice parts too. Shimano's MT400 brakes, SRAM's 12 speed SX Eagle drivetrain and a RockShox Judy fork combine to propel the Bizango beyond cross country only rides. It gives more expensive XC bikes a run for their money and leaves its rider with few excuses for not keeping up. The geometry helps it descend confidently but the carbon frame lacks comfort when riding, although for the price there's very little that rivals the Bizango Carbon. 
If you're considering this bike, it's worth noting that it may well come unstuck on gnarlier terrain, and especially if you're expecting it to tackle downhills with the same competence as the Caliber Bosna. Although for the XC rider on a budget, it'll be spot on. The Jamis Dakar A2 is another top value bike, costing exactly a thousand pounds. It's not quite capable of dethroning the Calibre Bosna of its top spot in this price bracket, but it sure comes close. Like the Bosna, the Dakar comes with an enviable spec for the money, but we were a little disappointed to see a QR fork that won't be quite as stiff as a bolt through option. We thought the Dakar had controlled suspension, well balanced handling and top component choices. We were also very impressed with the finish of the frame with its triple butter tubes, tapered head tube and internal cable routing. Although progressive for a budget bike, the geometry on the Jamis and indeed the Calibre is conservative in terms of reach. And for some people that can be a bit of a sticking point, especially if they're taller or wanting to ride gnarlier terrain. All things considered, this is still a really good way to spend £1,000 on a mountain bike. Although the Vita Sentia frame is fairly basic and doesn't have full length outer gear cable routing, the inner gear cable is exposed under the top tube and seat stay, it does have internal dropper post cable routing for future upgrades, unlocking some serious potential. With a 10-speed Shimano Dior drivetrain that uses a Sunrace cassette, Tektro brakes and WTB tubeless ready wheels wrapped in Schwalbe tyres, it's easy to forgive the Sentier for its lack of a dropper post. The X-Fusion RC32 fork performs okay once it's into its travel, but struggles with off-the-top suppleness. However, the headline 13.26kg weight makes this one of the lightest bikes in the sub £1,000 category. The geometry isn't as progressive as Calibre's Line 29, but it still looks pretty good for a trail bike, and the ride confirms this with snappy handling making it fun to take sharp turns or just ride mellower trails. Going for a slightly larger size than recommended should improve handling if you're looking to shred, but the Sentier is better suited to tamer trails. Though, it's hard to ignore the Sentier's price, at just £849.99 or $949.99. So what do you think of our list? Did we pick the best bikes for £1000 or are there better models out there for a grand that we missed off? As always, let us know in the comments and don't forget to like, subscribe and click the bell icon so that every time we upload a video, you get a notification.